Hello and welcome back to the Ivy Grove channel. My name is Meg Birch and I'm here with... I'm Nick. And we want to wish you a massive Happy New Year. Um, we know Christmas is a bit different for especially people in the UK this year. So we hope regardless of that, that you still have enjoyed Christmas and hopefully some time off and things like that. But today we thought we would do something a little bit different other than kind of singing and playing for you. So Nick and I thought it'd be a really nice way to kind of start 2021 by kind of having a bit of a conversation, letting you get to know us a bit more and hopefully you'll enjoy this and might give you an insight into what me and Nick do. So Nick, tell me how and what made you want to become a producer and also you do a lot of songwriting which obviously the Ivy Grove kind of channel viewers won't really know about so can you just give us a bit of an overview of what mm. you do really? Yeah so I mean obviously music's always been a love of mine, passion of mine you know like it is with you um, you know I can remember sort of you know my parents or sort of, they were musicians and sort of getting into it in, a, in an early age and sort of writing and producing is always something I've, I've loved but I think this year was when I really stepped into it a lot more you know not only because obviously we've all had so much more time at home and as a gigging musician normally sort of a lot of time would be spent out and gigging and everything but really i've sort of i guess i just really delved back into it and it was you know through that sort of rediscovering the the sort of love of creating music and writing producing it you know i've just kept going in it and it was that and sort of i guess like encouragement inspiration from friends as well um you know we've got some good friends that are doing this um and it was you know a few of them that sort of pushed give me the sort of a little bit of a push into it really and in, in that encouragement mm -hmm. and you know since i re you know since i started that and really sort of delved back into it I've, you know not looked back and i'm loving every bit of it and you know it is it is a journey um and i still i still feel like i'm at the start of it really in in, yeah. the, in the grand scheme of things but you know it's amazing to look back this year and obviously with our stuff with ivy grove it's one of those things that you look back and think it's amazing what we've done in this year you know despite everything um in a good yeah. thing, hasn't it the ivy grove stuff because obviously as nick says um, we both, I mean, Nick more so than me, but the songwriting has been a really good thing this year because we're not limited by having to physically be in a room with someone and it's worked really well having to do kind of yeah. note writing. And also Nick's been a bit modest, but Nick writes for, um, so he'll write for like briefs for, it could be a Korean pop star, it could be Chinese, um, but mostly kind of the Asian stuff, isn't it? And you also do like library music, which is stuff you could use for TV or various yeah. things. So it's been, I think it's been amazing that we've been able to kind of do these things remotely. And yeah. I, I, I'm like you, I'm dead proud of what we've kind of built with Ivy Grove. I mean, I, I'm not even sure, the people <coughs> don't even know, but I, I'm based in Liverpool, which is the north of England, and Nick's in Surrey, which is the south of England. So the fact that we've even made these videos happen every week has been has been amazing because I've seen you what maybe like two, three times this year. Yeah, yeah, it's, and it's you can you can tell that like, if you watch our you go back through the channel and you can see it, you know, the times that we've actually done one when we're in the same room, and I, I think it's only probably three, <laughs> yeah, maybe. 30 we've done, I know. Yeah, so you know, that's, I mean, and that was sort of brings me on to my question, my first question for you, Meg, which is obviously this year has been, <laughs> I mean, absolutely rubbish, but I mean, for, for us musicians, it's been, you know, extra, extra hard because we've not had that, that side of it that, you know, me and you love, which is the live aspect and, and mm. gig and stuff. So, I was going to ask what has been something this year that's helped you get through it. Yeah, I think that's a really good question. And obviously, like the, the, the answer most people will kind of guess that I'm going to say is is music. So the fact that we have had an outlet like Ivy Grove to do covers and for me to get a bit glam and feel like I'm kind of doing something that vaguely <laughs> resembles kind of what gigging life was like has been amazing. But I think... 
I think the songwriting has been a massive kind of um, outlet to help me with stuff. I think what's I think for everyone, regardless of being a musician or not, we've had a lot of thinking time this year, and we've yeah. really evaluated where we get the value. You know, like where we feel valued as a person. And I realised, oh my word, like I get so much enjoyment and so much kind of gratification from gigging. And it's been amazing for me this year to kind of push different doors to do the covers to do the songwriting and kind yeah. of explore a part of me that i've never really opened myself up to do writing songs that yeah about stuff i'm thinking about and so i don't know it's been i kind of the only positive i can see from all of this kind of coronavirus stuff is the fact that it's forced us to push doors that we would have never opened if yeah. life continued and there's, you know, there's things in the pipeline that people will find out about in a, in literally a matter of weeks of things I've been up to this year um, that just would never have happened if if we hadn't been forced into this pandemic. So yeah, yeah, definitely. It's been a crazy old year, hasn't it? It's just been <laughs> yeah. Talking about gigs, my question to you was. Um, obviously, for for people who don't know, the the way me and Nick kind of know each other is. For about the last three years or so, we have been in the same kind of function party band. So me and Nick, and we, we travel together in the car as well. So me and Nick, we've known each other for a long time. And um, obviously we've done some amazing gigs and we've done some pretty crappy gigs. <laughs> we've definitely done our fair share. Um, and I guess my question to you is, have you got like a highlight gig from the last kind of 10 years or so or biggest achievement or something like you're proud of like maybe a cool story yeah it's it's that's a great it's a great question and like any sort of gigging musician has been sort of going for a number of years like has got plenty of stories to tell about gigs and you know stuff happening and um i think for me sort of venue wise um you know i'd never thought that you know stepping into it i would have had the opportunity some of the opportunities i've had but i sort of i think the fun on the function side i think a standout gig for me was when we played at the shard you know the top you know one of the, the top floors of the shard and that was one of those moments where because we we you know we arrived there um and it was it was like a finance company um and you know they we set up quite quickly and then it when we quite often the case when you get to these gigs you set up pretty quickly and then you have like you know a few hours sort of kill mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's one of those times where it's kind of like it you know you sort of think is this really happening because they basically said to us um yeah you guys just go down to that you know the five star restaurant overlooking london in the shard and you've got <laughs> everything paid for we're sat in this incredible hotel like restaurant in the shard mm -hmm. everything's paid for drinking champagne and it's like <laughs> and top of all like you're sort of being paid for it as well <laughs> so that was like one of even being in the in the toilets, I was like, oh. "This is the funniest <laughs> toilet I've ever been in my life." It's like, so funny because it's like anyone that anyone that's done sort of function and covers party band stuff knows that yeah. there's a massive difference in sort of where you could be one week to the other week, you know, because it it could be. You know, we, we might have been at the Shard that week in this five-star hotel and in the restaurant and stuff. But then the next week, we're probably behind the back of a, in, in the marquee in a tent, sitting on some crates, like... Eating salt some... again, probably. Like, <laughs> <what's> <laughs> <life>? <laughs> eating some leftovers or something, you know? It's yeah. so weird gig life, isn't it? Because in some respects, it is so glamorous and it's so lovely. And you get paid to go to some, like, amazing dudes. Like, I know one of... Uh, the good gigs we did as well was we were at the Belfry oh, yeah. Centre in Birmingham and that was well that was amazing. And hey, we were and everything, didn't we? Um, when we were sat waiting, we met that Formula One. Yeah, David Coulthard, I chatted to him for a bit. Yeah. Cool, we're just having drinks with the rich and famous. But then <laughs> also it's people never understand that how much grafting goes into it, how much driving. Yeah. How much waiting around how many crap gigs you have to do to get the good gigs mm, yeah um, so yeah yeah and then the other one i was gonna i was just gonna drop in there just you know a little but you know I, I have got actually got to play at uh wembley wembley arena the emirates stadium and trafalgar square 
it's just, you know, casual. Just, <laughs> <laughs> sort of venue wise, they're not bad, are they really? <laughs> well, yeah. I've done Wembley as well, so. You have, you have. <laughs> and that, next question for you, what has actually been your, your worst gig experience, would you say? Or the funniest or, you know. Uh, we've, we've definitely had our fair share. <laughs> <laughs> I you think do, so. You do have to laugh about it, otherwise you'll just cry <laughs> or want to go home in the car. Yeah. Um, I think that there's three stand out and they're only quick. <laughs> Don't say three. Yeah, the first one was, uh, bless them, it had been terrible rain and they had, the, they had to change their venue last minute, but it was in the middle of nowhere, it was like a three hour drive away. And you were coming from somewhere else that day, so you didn't drive me. And I remember it had already been stressful getting there and, and stuff like that. And it was, when we got there, it was kind of carnage that no one really knew what was going on. And then we got a call from you saying you had a flat tire. Yeah, the tire blew. And you had all the gear with you. So we couldn't set up or anything. And it was just like, <laughs> oh, my So that was stressful and we were having to bring kind of local tyre places to try and get it sorted as we were setting up. We eventually got there. So that was a stressful one. I think another one was, um, I won't go into too much detail so that we don't get, we don't have to write (laughs) content. But um, with drinks and beverages being handed around at these sorts of events, um, we have seen our fair share of body parts, shall we say. Um, In fact, every single part of both genders body parts we've seen <laughs> throughout the years haven't we um on the dance floor don't ask me why it happens it just does and we're stood there and we just go okay that person's just got out there you know <laughs> so they're pretty bad um and i'd say the last one was we were at this amazing venue in bath which oh yeah good and it was a beautiful, it was beautiful, wasn't it? Like this the venue is what is up there with the amazing venues we've done, yeah. Well, I don't know what happened, whether it was a sound limiter thing or <laughs> a, a power surge from all the stuff plugged in, but we were halfway through a first dance. It was the first dance, it could and not it have happened. Zoom, like that. <laughs> and we were like, oh my word, this is the worst thing ever. And it took a good... (laughs) 10 minutes, probably. 15 minutes. But when we turned everything on, it had reset all our levels. Oh yeah, oh man, that was... We were like, oh my word, so not only has the first dance been ruined, but we're now, they've had to wait 15 minutes for us to even restart the first dance. And not only that, but we're going to have to now sound check in front of everyone. And it was just, like, that was... Yeah, it, it was actually they they told us that the limiter was at a point, and we were like, right, when we and when in the soundtrack, we were nowhere near that point. No, no. But then when it came to, <laughs> oh, it was just it literally couldn't have happened at a worse time. Halfway through, you can imagine like the first dance. You know, luckily the people were were really oh. you know, so nice and really. Oh, awesome. I'd say they're all like something had happened like it would have been the word but they yeah. were so chill weren't they and i was like thank god <laughs> thank god that they're but sometimes you get sometimes you get these amazing venues but they don't have the most they don't equal it on their sort of sound and audio system you know so yeah. oh. but sometimes it does like sometimes you get an amazing you know sometimes everything clicks and it's just you have you know for all those ones you know, we, we've had some incredible gigs, haven't we, really? Mm-hmm. I think the standout, one of the funniest times I've has happened to me with our band is when, I can't remember, it must have been like living on a prayer or something, you know, during the solo. And this guy next to me, who was on the dance floor dancing, <laughs> I literally like, I'm playing a lot. I looked to Ben, the drums, and then I, look, I turned back. And this guy, I didn't even realise, but he had, so he had, he had a prosthetic leg. <gasps> I don't remember and, this. Got his, he'd taken his prosthetic leg off <laughs> and he, he was playing his, his leg like the air guitar in front of <laughs> <laughs> So when I was playing the solo to this Living on a Prayer, this guy was doing air <laughs> with his leg. Playing his leg, literally. He was playing his leg. Oh, uh, that was, um, I don't know if that'll ever happen again that in my life. 
Combos. That's amazing. I don't know how many how many guitarists can say that's ever happened to them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that is quite odd. Yeah. Um, not so much kind of the function side of the music industry, but maybe the songwriting side. Yeah. Um, is what do you kind of briefly like just a couple kind of highs and lows of, of kind of that whole writing process and yeah. being involved in that part of the music industry? I think um, like you mentioned it before, but with with technology nowadays, like it's amazing. Like anywhere, anywhere you are in the world, as long as you've got internet and a, and a half decent laptop, you can literally have a studio. You know, you can literally make a song, make an album. Um, and I think what the beauty of that for musicians, like even for us, we're in the same country, but it wouldn't matter. Like Meg could literally be in, you know, Japan or something and we could make a track together. There's no difference. It's mm -hmm. just, you know, that technology we're able to, you know, I'll, you know, lay down a track or something and, and an idea and then I'll ping it over to Meg. Meg will come up with some ideas and then we can just bounce back and forth. So I think that's one of the mm -hmm. you know, things that I love about, you know, sort of being able to write in that way. And obviously we wouldn't have been able to do what we've done this year without that fact, you know, doing, doing mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, on the other side, um, you know, I think anyone would agree with me, you know, um, that it's just been a bit, you know, when you sort of compare the this country's the, the sort of government support in terms of the art sector and everything, you compare that to other European countries, it's just mm -hmm. been just a shocker, really. And I just, you know, I just feel for anyone out there that's, you know, doing, trying to do, you know, make it get by like you know if you're a gigging musicians if you're a freelancer if you're an actor and you know yeah it's just shocking really and it's just been it's just quite sad to see the you know just the unfairness when you compare like there's you know the other other countries that have just plowed into the arts like they've been able to get back sooner there's a lot more investment gone into it and for a lot of a hard career art, anyway, isn't it sorry it's a hard career anyway. We have enough setbacks as it is. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, it really is. Um, and I think, yeah. So that's that's one thing that I've not, I, I thought has been a challenge and I'm not liked about it. Um, you know, but I'm, I'm, like we said before, like we're, we're really hoping that, you know, come spring, summer, that we can get back to some sort of normality and, and start gigging again and start, you know, for all of those people that have lost so much work, you know, um, so yeah, I and think. And the channel, like, if you're watching this and you subscribed, like, we literally love you. It, this, <laughs> doing YouTube has given us a creative outlet. And also what we're trying to build here is we're hoping that the content is interesting, inspiring, and we just want this to grow as well. So if you've enjoyed any of our videos over 2020, or you're enjoying this and you think, oh, do you know what? Those guys, like, they really care about the craft. They really care about what they do. Please, like, send a little message to maybe even five, ten of your friends and just say, listen, these guys are doing something a bit different and um, yeah. you should get yeah. on board. So thank you already for the support, but let's spread the word. Try yeah, I mean, anyone, that's totally like what Meg said there is like when, when you know, back in start of lockdown you know as musicians we, we lost that sort of that outlet for it mm. and i think you know, that ivy grove and what we're doing is kind of almost started from that sort of frustration of not having that outlet as musicians and that's why we've got loads of other musicians we want to get a whole load more as well like involved because it's you know, we want to show be able to sort of have a have a stage that sort of showcases that talent that's out there and, and all those different artists and you know we've we've loved and you know we want to say thank you to every one of those people that have collaborated with us and you know being a part of this journey and, and like meg said anyone that's you know subscribed or supported us a comment it's it's really means a whole lot to us um and it but it you know it is it isn't easy it isn't easy to keep going so literally if you are able to spread the word and just you know help us you know bump up those subscribers you know that would be great
cost it doesn't cost anything i don't know if there's people out there that i think there are some people that think there's a, oh no you know you know you subscribe you're gonna yeah subscription you pay a month no there's nothing <laughs> that's, just, that's not it with youtube it's literally just a couple of clicks and you won't even notice it you know definitely um, but it's it, well, yeah going forward then i think kind of wrapping up kind of in the last kind of question and we can say this to, to each other is Firstly, if, if we were this huge platform and we could collaborate with anyone in the world, what would your dream collaboration be? And then kind of off the back of that, what are your kind of personal kind of, if we can, it's hard even asking this question because life is so unsure at the moment with everything going on, but are there any hopes and dreams for 2021? So dream collaboration and aspirations next year um that's that's another really hard question because for me like i i have so many influences and in you know i get inspired from so many different angles which is great if you're if you're a writer if you're a musician you know i think me as a as a musician i've just been influenced and inspired by so many over the years so it could change like i could say to you a couple of names now but then maybe in a couple of weeks i'll go oh, i should have said those names or those names yeah um but for me kind of obviously getting a lot more into the producing side of it and writing side of it mm -hmm. so i i i think ryan tedder is one um who's like just i mean he's unbelievable like you, you if anyone doesn't know who ryan tedder is he was from the, he's from the band uh, one republic mm -hmm. and um but he's also a massive songwriter and producer and you only have to just look up, <laughs> look at his Wiki Wikipedia page and look down his song credits. It's unbelievable. Like, I know he's written a lot, but even I was just like, when I saw like, oh, you wrote that, you wrote that. <laughs> so I just like, gosh, I would just even love, like just being just literally a day, just, just in the studio with him, just to see. Even I just would just fly on the wall. You literally just that, just, just, I would just sit there, I'll make tea, you know, I'll just bring whatever you just like, <laughs> I'll just be there in the background. So someone like him and everyone, and any, anyone that's in music as well, like Max Martin, like he's just ridiculous, you know, yeah. it's just like, yeah, like anything sort of right, writer production wise. And then Pharrell as well, like if Pharrell would be amazing to spend like, in the same way, it would just be amazing just to spend like, just like how, you know, you can see stuff, you can find stuff online, but yeah. I would just, all, all those guys, I just, you just learn so much by just, you know, if you just had a day in the studio with them, you just, you just be like, it'd be incredible, you know, it'd be incredible to, to have that uh, experience. Yeah. How about you, man? <laughs> Well, again, I'm like you, like it could change week by week, but I think I'm really lucky at the moment that the music industry is going through a bit of a, it goes through trends. So I know like kind of in the early 2000s, bands were huge. Think about like Foo Fighters, Killers. Yeah, yeah. And then we're kind of in a period at the moment that it's really female based, which mm. is amazing. So we've got, you know, Miley Cyrus, Dua Lipa, and marie ella air becky hill all these amazing massive like powerhouse kind of yeah yeah so i guess it would be kind of in that vein i would i mean dream collaboration would be miley cyrus or Dua Lipa. like i'm obsessed and you'll know that from even the ivy grove i've had to really hold back from not just doing a miley cyrus <laughs> cover every single week <laughs> Oh, it's been can we do this smiley one? Can we do this smiley one? Can we do a smiley one? Can we do another Dua Lipa one? Like, it's just... Yeah, I'm obsessed. So I'd, I'd love to do that. But I would also love to be a feature um, of the sort of band slash group like a Clean Bandit or Rudimental. Something where like they're established in their own right. And then they'd just be like, oh, that Meg, she's got a good voice. We'll get her on the track. And I'd be like, yeah. yes. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I guess that sort of thing would be. Incredible. Well, that was probably one of the highlights for Ivy Grove this year is when Clean Bandit mentioned us in the voice. Like, I couldn't believe that. And Meg Cornwall, I thought she was 
joking with me. You know, she called me and said a, a clean bandit have mentioned us. Like, what? So, yeah. So, hopefully, many more moments like that. And I guess going into twenty twenty one, thinking about what we want to what, what we want to achieve. Yeah. In terms of Ivy Grove, we want to see that grow. Yeah. Um. Obviously, going to continue with our weekly kind of uploads and going with that hopefully we can get got a couple of people up our sleeve for some really interesting interviews as well um and also as i say personally in my own kind of musical journey i think there'll be some really exciting things that i can share um on the channel and all i'm saying is watch this space nick knows you know he's a close friend they get to know these things so mm -hmm. I think it could be a really exciting year next year. I'm trying to stay positive and hopeful about what opportunities might open up. So, no, we'd love to see that thousand subscriber mark. That's kind of like our first, you know, that's always been our first sort of target, really. Yeah. <laughs> and it's steadily, steadily sort of climbing. And, and anyone that started anything like this is knows that it's there is there just isn't any. There's no secret way you can't sort of buy your subscribers. You can't, there is literally no, there is no way, you know, YouTube knows. YouTube's too big a company to, <laughs> to know if there's any sort of cheat codes. They're just, it. it's about hard work, consistency, just that graft every week. Um, and that's what, but like, you know, we both said, we love it. We love like having the outlet for it, you know, so for us, we, you know, we enjoy it. So. We're determined we're going to keep going with it and you know we'd love to have loads more collaborations and everything this year so yeah stay tuned and, and watch out for more every week because it will be there <laughs> we hope this kind of has been kind of exciting to watch you've got to know us a bit more and hopefully you're really excited as to where this will all go in 2021 as well because we're only doing this because you guys are watching it so um, we hope you're excited too and thank you so much we will leave it there and I will say adios amigos. and happy new year everyone and happy new year 20 let's go glad to see the back of 2020 <laughs> I don't want to talk about oh. you see you ever again get that vaccination <laughs> well thank you and we'll see you again next week Goodbye. thanks guys Bye. Thanks. see you guys see you soon <laughs>